Hi everyone, it's Jonathan Gettin from Ars Technica. I'm here with Steve Tyler from Ford, and we're here to see Ford's new hybrid police car. Interesting looking machine. Yeah, thank you very much, and we're very proud of it actually. It's the first ever pursuit rated hybrid police vehicle to market. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about it. We've got a great story to tell. For starters, you know, fuel economy is, is a great story on this vehicle. <laughs> Part of it is that we get 38 miles per gallon, which is more than twice what we get on our current police interceptor sedan. Right. Um, but that really only tells a part of the story. You're probably familiar with how police vehicles are operated. Right? I, I was about to say, they spend a lot of time idling. That's exactly right. Yep, exactly. So you've got lights and computers and radios and all that electric equipment running. And so mm -hmm. uh, to sustain that, a conventional gasoline-powered vehicle has to continuously be running to power that type of equipment. Right. With the hybrid technology, um, that equipment runs off of your lithium ion hybrid battery mm -hmm. and the engine only comes on intermittently to recharge the battery. Uh, so there's significant savings at idle, even greater than the fuel savings when you're driving the vehicle. Right. So what we've seen is, is and uh, you can check out um, our scenarios at FordPoliceResponder.com. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows a scenario where if you drive 20,000 miles per year and you idle about 60% of the time, which is 4.9 hours on an eight hour right. shift and you run two shifts a day, you can save about 3,800 bucks to 3,900 bucks a year just in that scenario. And that's, that's and then, just in one car. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly, that's, per vehicle. Yeah. Right, that's a lot. Yep, and so, so in it, uh, and on our website, we have a calculator that you can put in your own scenario and see what you might save for your own agency uh, if, if an agency has a different type of usage. For law enforcement needs, are there any particular things you've had to, to beef up? I mean, I know, you know, traditionally police cars may, maybe have operated oil coolers and mm -hmm. um, maybe a slightly hotter engine. Is, is that the case here? Yeah, absolutely. So this vehicle is, is made specifically for police use. It's made to be pursuit rated, right, <laughs> and, and pursuit rating, right, which is uh, tested at Michigan State Police in the mm -hmm. fall, as well as Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. You know, they put it through uh, vehicle dynamics tests, acceleration, braking, ergonomics, all these different tests, and so we have to stand up to that type of punishment, uh, and those results get published, and so the agencies can see, hey, I can actually, you know, use this vehicle for the type of usage we need. So what we have on it, first of all, is improved cooling mm -hmm. under the hood. Um, we have unique police wheels and tires, or seal wheels, with... Um, uh, Goodyear uh, Eagle RSA tires and unique uh, uh, center caps. So no, no need to worry about curbing the alloys. <laughs> right, right, exactly, yeah. And, and speaking of curbing, the vehicle is made to go over eight inch curb mm -hmm. uh, without you know, damage to the underneath of the vehicle. Right. Uh, there's improved uh, braking, uh, 17 inch uh, twin piston calipers. We have an improved suspension, uh, more durable. The vehicle sits about 12 millimeters higher than, uh, than a retail fusion would. Um, you know, and, and I can walk you around and show you a little bit more as we go through uh, kind of the inside of the car. Yeah, definitely. Like, let's, yeah. yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so. great. All right. So you see coming around to the interior of the vehicle, we have heavy duty, uh, durable seat fabric inside. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, seat fabric is made to stand up to the rigors of police use, someone getting in and out of the seats. And we also have slimmed down bolsters. So when a police officer is getting in with their duty belt and, and different equipment that they have on, uh, it's a lot more comfortable to drive in than it would be in a uh, regular passenger vehicle. We have the easy clean vinyl flooring, uh, which is unique for the police vehicle. And in the back as well, the back as well, we have a vinyl rear seat as well, uh, which is made for easy cleanup. And, and is this something that um, different police departments can configure their back seats the way they want? Yeah, so some agencies will uh, pull out the seat and they put in a, like, a different type of seat, and, and that's all done aftermarket. That's not a, a Ford thing that's done, as well as, uh, you know, if they want to put in a partition between the front and rear seats, right. uh, that's done as well. Um, although we do have uh, heavy duty anti stab plates mm -hmm. uh, in the back of the seat, so, you know, someone can't uh, get through to the front seat uh, passenger. And doors that only open from the outside? <laughs> okay. Right, so that is an option we offer. So you can have the uh, um, door handle, the locks, and the windows disabled from the inside so that uh, you can only function from the outside or the driver's panel switches. And then we also have these closeout panels here, mm -hmm. right, to prevent, uh, try to prevent from uh, getting any type of contraband hidden anywhere inside the door panels. Right. And then around the back, load-bearing battery cover. Mm -hmm. So in a hybrid vehicle, there's a, a little bit of a hump to, for the battery. And what we've done here is we've put in this battery cover, with, which is load bearing, so that space can be usable. Um, people can put their equipment there. For example, we have the light controller mounted there. You could mount computers and whatnot. Uh, there's space for a floor jack here. Uh, it's, it's designed to be functional for the police uh, uh, agency's use. And there's a cooling fan that can be mounted in this uh, package tray, so it'll pull the extra heat out of right. a lot of electric equipment that's mounted there. So that's an optional feature is that cooling fan. Got it. Um, and roughly how much? How much would this cost if I were a police department looking to buy one? 
So we haven't um, released the pricing yet. Okay. But essentially, you know, there is a walk up because of the fact there's additional uh, motors and, and different things, the battery and stuff like that. So there's there's a cost there. So there's additional walk up. And if you compare it to the police interceptor sedan, we expect it to be roughly with the fuel savings mm -hmm. based on our scenario. We expect it to be roughly a one year. Uh, okay. And, and so the, the greatest thing is is you know you, you not only have the the savings of fossil fuel, right, and you have the savings of your fuel spend if mm -hmm. you're an agency, but you also save CO2. Right. In addition to that, you're going to the pump less. So with less time at the pump, that's less downtime for the vehicle, which means more uptime for officers and vehicles. They're on the road, they're doing their job, they're doing the policing that uh, you know that they're called to do and helping us uh, keep safer on the streets a little bit better. Great, thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, thank you so much. Take Cheers. Hopefully this is, this is the only time you'll see me sitting in the back of one of these all year. <laughs>